Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah. Ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah. Hayya 'ala as-salah. الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله praise be to almighty allah we praise him, we seek his help, and we seek his forgiveness. We seek refuge with our Lord from the evils of our souls and our misdeeds. Whomsoever Allah guides will never be led astray, and whomsoever Allah leads astray, no one can guide. I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship but Allah, alone without partners unto him. And I bear witness that Muhammad is his slave and messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين من اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون الله سبحانه وتعالى reminds us in his glorious book O you who have believed fear Allah as he should be feared and do not die except as Muslims in submission to him جماعة المسلمين الله سبحانه وتعالى Reminds us in his book, وَمَا خَلَقَتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ We all know this ayah. And I did not create the jinn and mankind except to worship me. My dear brothers, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala defines our purpose in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not only referring to our ritualistic practices like salah and fasting and zakah, etc. <coughs> nor, is he also, nor is he just telling us to be good outwardly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also refers to what exists in our hearts. Working on our hearts and the inner connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is something we need to work on continuously. It's, a, it's a, an ongoing journey. It's a never-ending journey of purification and elevation of our souls. Rituals are the outer forms of worship, our ibadah. Where spirituality infuses these rituals with meaning and depth. Engaging in acts of worship alone, without a spiritual connection, is just very mechanical. It's like up, down, touch the ground, you're praying salah, you're up, down. It's like exercise, just moving your body. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam emphasized this balance in his actions and his teaching that sincerity or ikhlas and mindfulness are the keys to enriching our spirituality. Take the example of the hadith quoted by Abu Huraira radiallahu anh, where he reported that Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that there are people who fast and get nothing from their fast except hunger. And there are those who pray and get nothing from their prayer but a sleepless night. My brothers, what do we learn from this? We learn that our fasting, our salah, our zakah, etc., etc., cannot be done just as ritualistic actions. They cannot, they cannot just be physical actions. 
They have to be attached to something deeper, something more meaningful. And let's take a moment and think about what is the greatest reward we will ever be able to receive. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that when the people of paradise enter it, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will say, would you like anything more? And the people will say, SubhanAllah, have you not brightened our faces? Have you not given us the Jannah and saved us from the hellfire? And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will then lift His veil. Rasul Sallallahu says that there will be nothing given to the people of Jannah in this moment that will be more beloved than to them than seeing the face of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Just imagine this moment, SubhanAllah. You know, we often we see people on, on TV or on the internet and we think, oh, they're so awesome, they're so amazing, I wish I could meet them one day, mashallah, inshallah, you know. Like, I wish I could meet so and so, I wish I could meet that person. And we build this picture up of these people because they're so amazing. And they could be good people, mashallah, I'm not saying it's not, you know. But have we ever thought about meeting the one who created all of those awesome people? Subhanallah. Many of us will sacrifice a lot to, you know, to, to see our heroes. And so that's what we call our, you know, our sporting icons, our famous uh, celebrities, uh, influencers, etc. And I'm not taking anything away from these people's achievements. But just imagine meeting the one who created all of these things and all of these humans. So when we're performing our duties towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our obligations, are we just going through the motions? Up, down, touch the ground, stay away from food, give away our money because, you know, because that's what Allah tells us? Or are we picturing that day, inshaAllah, when we will meet our Lord and He will reveal Himself to us? Our acts of ibadah are nonetheless important. They are very important as they form the foundation with the relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we have to do these ibadat with presence and devotion, with the intention of drawing us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My uh, little one <laughs> this morning, he said to me, I wish when I get to Jannah, there's going to be a witch that can create potions, that can give, why, like, why do you want that? He's like, I want to have superpowers like Allah. <laughs> <laughs> we had a fun conversation with it. But afterwards I was thinking, actually, as Muslims, we do have potions. Potions are uh, things that you, like witches, they mix things together and they give you, like, they give you different powers. But in Islam, we actually have these things. And they come in different forms. You don't call them potions, but they exist. Because they're like magic. Dhikr, dua, reflection. Contemplation, intention, wallahi, these are fairy dust, they are potions, they are superpowers. And often in the hustle and bustle of our lives, we often forget about these little things which are super, super powerful. Dhikr in itself is the nourishment of our soul. It is the nourishment of our heart. It is a way to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in any circumstance. We don't need to go to the go to find a bathroom to take wudu. We don't have to be in a state of uh, uh, of cleanliness. We don't have to be clothed in a certain way. We don't have to be upright. We don't have to be sitting down. We can be anywhere in any form of position in any state, and we can remember <coughs> Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that the comparison of the one who remembers Allah and the one who does not is like the living and the dead. Dua. And we spoke about imagining meeting the one who created all of the amazing things that we have access to. Dua is a conversation directly with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is also in a manifestation and an acknowledgement of how reliant and dependent we are on our Rabb. We have nothing except what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us. He nourishes us, He sustains us, He gives us everything we have. And when we make dua, when we appeal to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we embody our humility. Show that we are just creations, just inside. <laughs> Reflection and contemplation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's signs are spread throughout the universe. Again, 
everywhere we turn, everywhere we look, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَوَلَمْ يَتَفَكَّرُوا فِي أَنفُسِهِ Do they not reflect upon themselves? By contemplating and reflecting on the beauties and the intricacies of creation, Jumat, we strengthen our connection with the Creator. By looking at the creation, thinking, SubhanAllah. Yesterday, uh, we were talking about, you know, my son asked, why, why do bees make honey, so much honey, and they don't even eat it? Like, SubhanAllah, good question. But then we were talking about what they do with the honey and they make the beehives, and the shapes that they make. And it's, subhanAllah, it is unimaginable of how this tiny creature, no matter where you go in the world, they make the same shapes to make their hives. And it just happens like that, subhanAllah. It's not a, there's no chance, so you don't, don't talk to me about uh, things happening by chance, subhanAllah. If we just reflect on these things and realize that this thing, this little tiny bee, this beehive, this honey, what it takes from our Creator, subhanahu wa ta'ala, to just kun fayakun, be at it is. Jamaatul Muslimin, we are all busy people. We all have obligations, we all have duties, whether it's studying, family, work, whatever community activities, etc. Let us consider what all of this is for. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروا إنه هو غفور رحيم بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن إن أعمال بنية We've all heard this right Actions are by intentions and every man shall have only that which he intended. The foundation of our spirituality, my brothers, it starts with a sincere intention. Whether it's offering a smile, whether it's striving in major acts of ibadah, our intention transform, transforms those mundane deeds into something meaningful. Sometimes we think as Muslims, oh, we are different. And we feel sometimes, especially younger, uh, our younger generation, feel sad about it or feel disconnected with the community because we're different. But let me tell you this, our difference, wallahi, is our strength. We are different. We see the world differently. When you have a, a communication with, with non, uh, people who don't have the spirituality, this connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they're reflecting on how much fun they can have. How much more fun can we enjoy ourselves? Without looking beyond the fun. Without looking at what comes next. That's a good thing, Jamal, that we are spiritually connected to something which is beyond just this dunya. Halas, we're going to die, we're all going to die at some point. We're all going to be six foot under the ground. What's next? Spirituality. It nurtures our heart, it nurtures our humility, it nurtures our compassion and our sense of purpose in our lives. Just as the body requires food and nourishment, so too do our hearts. And spirituality, connecting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is what feeds our souls. I we cannot overestimate and overemphasize the importance of spirituality to, to, in Islam. Often we, uh, we hear of, of, of stories where, where people say spirituality is bad because people take it ex to the extreme, because they start creating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because they start talking to other people instead of talking via, to, via others to, to, instead of talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is not what we're talking about. We're talking about a real direct conversation, direct connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So don't let those things distract us. Let us be clear about our relationship with who that relationship is with. It is with our Rabb. So Jamaat al let's take away some small but meaningful actions with us today, inshallah. Number one, there is power in the pause. Before performing any act, whether that's an act of ibadah, whether that's a, brushing our teeth, 
whether that's going to work. Consider the spiritual connection that we are trying to achieve through our actions. Number two, when we are pausing, let us imagine that day when we will meet our Rabb, when we will meet our Creator, when we will meet our Sustainer, our Narisha, and the sheer overwhelming joy of that moment. SubhanAllah. Number three, remember our superpowers, our potions, dhikr, dua, reflection, contemplation, sincere intention. Sincere intention. Let's focus and make sure that we are keeping our intentions pure in whatever we are doing, inshallah. Jamaat Muslimin, this is a very special time of a very special day. Let us put our hands up and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us and guide us. Ya Allah, we thank you for your mercy, Ya Allah. We ask you to extend your mercy upon us throughout our lives and beyond that into our heart. Ya Allah, forgive us our sins, our sins and our shortcomings. Ya Allah, help us to develop a strong connection to you, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, accept our ibadah as a means of drawing closer to you, to you Ya Allah. Ya Allah, help us keep us sincere in our intentions. Keep us pure of heart, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, help us to help uh, to focus on our ultimate purpose, which is to serve you and to worship you, Ya Allah. Amen. Ya Allah, protect us from being distracted by the petty things in our lives. Amen. Ya Allah, place contentment, positivity and gratitude in our hearts and in our lives and bring us closer to you every day, Ya Allah. Amen. Ya Allah, accept our good deeds and forgive us our shortcomings and our transgressions. Help us change ourselves so that we can together change this Ummah. Ya Allah, grant us istiqamah. اللهم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وعرحنا الجنة من الأبرار يا عزيز يا غفار يا رب العالمين الحمد لله رب العالمين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبق يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون Surely Allah commands justice, good deeds and generosity to others and to relatives he forbids all shameful deeds and injustice and rebellion. He instructs you so that you may be reminded. <clears throat> and remember me, I will remember you. Be grateful to me and do not reject the faith. And without doubt, remembrance of Allah is the greatest thing in life. And Allah knows the deeds that you do.